church say amen. amen. I told her I don't normally preach this early, but I won't. I'm going to run him into the ground. He may not come back. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he might feed uh, my phone number on, his, on the screen or the jail number. They ain't answering that last time I was there. They tried to save me to death. And we'll do it. He say amen if you can. Amen. We certainly will do it. We appreciate so much for the actors who come up with his wife and their newborn child. And every time I call him, I feel like he changing diapers or something. Uh, he always changing diapers. And I say, man, I don't envy you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. But nevertheless, we just really appreciate him and his wife for coming. Yeah. We're from Wichita to be with us and, and to, to bless us and minister through song. And as he does so very well, doesn't he, church? Yeah. Amen. We just appreciate his love that he has for the Lord and then what he does. And, and when he comes, he don't say, you got to give me a thousand dollars. He just comes because he loved the Lord. Amen. Amen. And then we maybe we, we give him a piece of chicken or something. <laughs> the chicken they gave me Tuesday night, I saved you something. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you would uh, meet me in 1 Corinthians chapter well, excuse me, not First Corinthians. I'm going to do Exodus chapter 12 today. It is a building off of 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 3. Uh, if you meet me in Exodus chapter 12, we'll begin reading in verse number 1, uh, but I plan to pitch my tent in verse number 13. Y'all have it say Amen. amen. The Bible says, Now the Lord spake to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons, according to the number of the persons, according to every each man's needs, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the house where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it, with a belt on your waist, sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, well, y'all gonna make me preach right there. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Yes. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you. Well, when I strike the land of Egypt. 
Somebody say, when I see the blood. The Lord said, when I see the blood. All the stuff I was going to do to Egypt, when, when I see the blood, I'm going to pass over you. Oh, y'all going to make me preach right now. They want to preach me. You just can't mention the blood and I'm not get happy right there. Uh, to this morning, for a few moments, I just want to preach from the subject, when I see the blood. You may be seated. Thank you. God bless you. Oh, church, we have been in a great series so far. What was read into your hearing out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 3 uh, was when the Apostle Paul said to them that Jesus came and died for us according to the scriptures. Uh, now, uh, we've been studying uh, what that means over the last two weeks. Uh, this is our third installment, part number three of According to the Scriptures, When I See the Blood. Um, of course, at the time 1 Corinthians chapter 15 was written when Paul says according to the scripture, he did not mean New Testament scriptures because the New Testament had not yet been penned, it had not been written, it was in the process of being developed. So the Apostle Paul reaches back into the Old Testament and says Jesus Christ came and died for us according to the scriptures. The word according to means not that it was just in the scripture, but that it measures up with scripture. And so Jesus Christ came and died according or as the scripture measures it. The Old Testament then, of course, is what we must dive into to dissect where Jesus came and died for us. It does not specifically state that Jesus Christ would come and die for us, but we find the examples and what I've been teaching for the last two weeks, the type of of Christ that's found in the Old Testament. Yeah. It was in Genesis chapter 3 in verse number 21 where we saw the very first time that man had messed up what God did to cover him. Yeah. You remember when Adam and Eve messed up in the garden yeah. and God took an animal that was innocent that had done no wrong that yeah. just happened to be there and he killed it and covered them with the skin of the animal. Yeah. What we learned from that was that when you mess up you can't cover yourself. Right. You remember Adam and Eve took fig leaves and tried to cover themselves but God said, no, you can't mess up and cover yourself. You mess up and then let me cover you. We learned that he gave them the coats of skin because he was kicking them out of the garden and knew that what they had made to cover themselves was not sufficient for what they were about to go through. And you were able to shout and praise God that even in punishment, he still provides for you. Even though they messed up, God said, I still got to protect you from your very own mess up. Even though God punishes you, he he makes a way to provide to make sure that what you did doesn't kill you. Are you following this? Yeah. And what we learn from that, even when we drop down from chapter number three to chapter number four, we saw where Cain and Abel had issues and Cain slew Abel out of his jealousy because God had looked favorably upon the sacrifice of Abel and not of Cain. And you remember that Cain slew his brother and God said to him, I hear the voice or I hear your brother's blood calling out for me from the ground and he said I'm going to make sure that you pay for this and then God says to him uh, that he would put a mark on him to protect him so that whenever somebody saw him they wouldn't kill him even when Cain messed up in his punishment God provided for him yeah. we learned that in Genesis chapter number 22 on last week we learned that uh, Isaac was a type of Christ not only was Isaac a type of Christ but we learned that the ram was a type of Jesus Jesus Christ. We learned that Isaac goes from being a type of Christ and then when he gets on the altar and gets back up again, he becomes a type of us. Y'all remember that? We learned that Isaac, though he was in the form or the type of Jesus Christ, at the time he gets on the altar, when he finds the ram, it becomes the substitution and then we <coughs> get released. Are y'all following this? We learned that in Genesis chapter number 22, that is in that place, it is in that moment moment where Abraham names the place Jehovah Jireh, God will provide. We learn that in that place where God had chose to test Abraham was in the place where God teaches. The place called Moriah means to be taught of God. We learn that if you feel like you're being tested too much, that you must be in the right place. Yeah. We 
learn that you shall not leave the classroom of God until you pass your test. Yes. And today, we find ourselves in the third installment of, Gen of Exodus and this series where we see another type of Jesus Christ in the Passover lamb. Now, uh, I can safely say that this is a type of Christ because Second uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 7 says that Jesus Christ is our Passover. Being that Jesus Christ is our Passover, this morning I seek to link the New Testament Christ to the Old Testament Lamb. And I want you to see how God was working at our salvation back in Exodus. The text says in Exodus chapter 12, let me tell you where we are. Uh, God has uh, told Moses that he's going to uh, lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. Y'all remember this? You remember that long time ago he had told Abraham that his descendants would go into a place and be captive for 400 years. And now it's time that God released them from bondage. God then says to Moses that he needs to go tell Pharaoh to let his people go. God sends nine plagues upon Egypt that Pharaoh has not listened to. Uh, God sends all kinds of plagues. He turns the Nile into blood. He sends locusts into the land. Uh, he, he makes darkness to come upon all of the land. He sends all of these different plagues and Pharaoh has yet to get the point. So God says, what I'm going to do is deliver you from Egypt and judge Egypt and their gods all at the same time. Uh, you know you're showing up bad God, but you can do all of that in one setting. So God says, Moses, uh, I'm going to come through Egypt and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill or slay every firstborn male in Egypt. Not just humans, but I'm going to kill the animals too. Lord, why, why are you messing with the animals? Because the Egyptians would often make gods that look like animals. So God said, if I slay the animal, you'll discover that they weren't gods at all. So he comes through. Y'all ready for this? This is, this is, I'm, I'm going to see if I can make it better than the movie Prince of Egypt. Oh, oh, he, he comes through. So God says, God says to him, uh, take a lamb. And I want you, each family, to divide the lamb up. Matter of fact, go ahead and read from Start at verse number three. Speak to all the congregation of Israel. Speak to the congregation of Israel. Go ahead and read. Saying, on the tenth of this month. The tenth of this month. Go ahead and read. They are each one to take a lamb for themselves. Each take a lamb for themselves. Read. According to their fathers. According to the fathers. Household, a lamb for each household. A household. lamb for each household. Read. Now, if the household is too small for a lamb, if the house is too small for a lamb, read. then he and his neighbor nearest to the house are to take one according to the number of persons in them. Uh, then, then him, him and the neighbor can share the lamb according to the number of persons going to read. According to what each man should eat, uh -huh. you are to divide the lamb. Uh huh. Your lamb shall be an unblemished male. Your lamb should be an unblemished male. A year old. A year old. You had to take a lamb that was unblemished. It had no spot. It had no wrinkle. There was no defect in the lamb. It was pure. It was it was unblemished, right? And it had to be of the first year. It had to be a lamb that was in the prime of its life. It, it could not be a lamb that had gotten old. It, the firstborn lamb in the very first year of its life. Take that lamb. Go ahead and read. You may take it from the sheep or uh -huh. from the goats. Now you can take it from the sheep, and, and if you uh, and if you uh, don't have much money, you can take it from the goats. Go ahead and read. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day. Now take it on the tenth day, but I want you to keep it until the fourteenth day. Go ahead and read. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel uh -huh. is to kill it at twilight. Everybody in the assembly should kill it at twilight. I'm, I'm, I should be foreshadowing some events of Jesus Christ right now. You ought to be seeing the lamb that without spot or blemish or wrinkle. You, you ought to be seeing the congregation of Israel yelling to Pilate, crucify him. Go ahead and read. Moreover, they shall take some of the blood uh -huh. and put it on, on the two doorposts. Ooh, they ought to take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts. Uh -huh. Go ahead and read. And on the lintel of the houses. And on the lintel of the houses. From which they live. Go ahead and read. 
They shall eat the flesh that same night. Now, eat, I want you to eat the flesh the same night. Go ahead and read. Roast it with fire. Roast it with fire. Go ahead and read. And they shall eat it with unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. And read. bitter herbs. And bitter. Now, watch this, y'all. Watch this, y'all. Come in. Come in. Now, I thought, Brother Hill, that bitter herbs would make the, the lamb taste better. I mean, I, I don't make it a habit of eating lamb. Uh, unless it's, 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 it's been roasted real well. And from Foco, the child, absolutely. And then, then, then that, that's, that's good lamb. That's good lamb. I went somewhere, and, and uh, matter of fact, I went to the elephant bar in Overland Park, uh, and I ordered the lamb shanks uh, because I had eaten at, at Foco, and I thought to myself that lamb is lamb. I was wrong. <laughs> Fogo lamb tastes like steak or something. <laughs> the lamb at the elephant bar. <laughs> and they brought me the lamb on the plate. And, and I said, oh, this is... First thing I noticed is the lamb didn't look like the lamb I had. <laughs> oh, y'all getting this? And, and the lamb over there, when I cut through it, it was good. You remember, I ain't lamb when you were there with me. And it was good lamb, it was good lamb, but when, 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 when the elephant bought up with the lamb, I noticed that this lamb don't quite look like the lamb that, that I had over yonder. Y'all know what I'm saying? And, and so I, 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 I started eating that lamb, and I quickly realized I was not in a place where you should be ordering lamb. Are y'all following this? Uh, this was not the same type of lamb. This is a different lamb. This lamb was boiled lamb. This, this lamb had been put in the oven. It wasn't roasted. It wasn't on a grill. A gaucho didn't come and make this type of lamb that I was eating. This was this was different lamb. Are y'all following this? Now the lamb that I had at Fogo when the gaucho came and the leather chaps and and he put the big machete and he started cutting that lamb. That was good lamb. But that other type of lamb, what 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 I was looking for. So I started trying to find something to make the the elephant bar lamb. <laughs> Tastes like the Fogo type of lamb. Y'all follow this? What I discovered was no matter what I did to the lamb, it wasn't going to change the way it was prepared. God asked them to put bitter herbs on the lamb, not to improve the lamb's taste, but to remind them of the bitterness of bondage. Amen. So every time they bit the lamb, they had to remember how it felt to be in bondage. Are y'all following this? Yeah. Now, 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 God says, God says, are y'all still with me? Y'all, come on, come on. I'm trying to preach that. Now, when God said, I don't, you can't boil it. God said, you can't boil the lamb. I don't want the lamb boiled. Boil the lamb, you have to cut it up, or you have to do I don't want it boiled. I want you to roast this lamb. Matter of fact, I want you to roast the whole lamb. So me being as inquisitive and as and you know as I am, I will research anything. Does not matter what it is, I research. I research how high V got started because I like the deli. That's just how I am. <laughs> how I am. I want to. I want to understand everything I'm doing. I, I research everything. There's nothing that I do that I hadn't researched. Uh, so the way they did it back then, they had to take two wooden uh, spits, put the lamb on the spit. The spick would be in the form of a T shape. So they would take the entire lamb, not a part of the lamb, not 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 just a leg or, or a lamb shape like I ordered, the whole lamb and put it on the spick so that it could hold the lamb over the fire. And and when they roasted the lamb, the fire would consume the lamb. Are y'all following this? The lamb is on a makeshift cross. Roasting on the fire. And, and the, theologically, fire represents the wrath of God. Y'all follow this? Right. And so God is about to judge a nation. And so he puts the lamb on a cross and puts it in fire. <laughs> oh, he's foreshadowing the coming of Jesus Christ. Oh, he's foreshadowing the coming. <laughs> so now they, they got to put the bitter. Go ahead, go ahead and read. Go ahead and read. I'm trying to get to where I need to go. Go ahead and read. 
It's been roasted with uh -huh. both head and its legs, uh -huh. along with its entrails. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And you shall not leave any of it over until the morning. Oh, you can't leave the sacrifice left over. Uh, because God don't do leftover sacrifices. You, you, can't, you can't eat some of it right now and come back and get some of it later. When God does a sacrifice, he does it once for all. Y'all follow this? Uh, he doesn't do a sacrifice where uh, you, you just leave it there. Matter of fact, God said that if the lamb is too much for you, he says share it with the neighbor. And I've come this morning to tell you that even now, the lamb is still too much for us. God has so much lamb that it's been 2,000 years and it's still too much for us. And I can't help but to tell it. I can't help but to share it with people because that lamb is too much for me by myself. Oh, I don't know about you this morning, but I praise God that that lamb was too much. Brother Hill could have all the lamb. You could have all the lamb, but there's enough lamb left for me and for you. And the next time you see somebody sinking deep in that sin, you want to tell them, look, I've been to the lamb. I tasted of the lamb, and that lamb was too much for me. That's enough lamb left for you. Enough for Enough for everybody. I want to share the lamb with you. I don't know about y'all, church, but I'm so glad. Brother, why do I wear my, my sweat coughs and napkins and things? You, you're slipping on your job. Like you're slipping on his job. Uh, church, I, I'm, uh, I'm looking up. I'm about getting ready to start sweating. I'm about to preach. You ain't got my sweat cough. Thank God bless you. God bless you. All right. God bless you. God bless you. All right. All right. And, and so, and so watch this, church. Y'all know what I started. I got to shout. I got to shout because I realized what God had done. The lamb was too much for one person. And I like when he says, every man, every man man take a lamb for his house. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, my, wow. yeah. Because every man is responsible for covering his house. Y'all yeah. right. gonna make me preach. He, 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 didn't, he, notice, he, he, didn't, he didn't tell he didn't tell the, 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 the sister, the wife to go get the lamb. He said every man take a lamb for your house. You are responsible for covering the house that you live in. Why? Because you're the head of the house. You're the man of the house. You're the one responsible for the protection of your house. And, and then he said, now I want you not only to take the lamb, I want you to slay it and dip the blood and hiss off and put it over the lintel. Why? Because every man should be responsible for covering your house in the blood of the lamb. Are y'all following this? You ought to be responsible for making sure that your entire house is covered in the blood. Yeah. Go ahead and read. Go ahead and read. I'm trying to get to my preaching point. Go ahead and read. But whatever is left of it until morning, uh -huh. you shall burn it with fire. Uh -huh. Go ahead and read. Now you shall eat of it in this manner, uh -huh. with your loins girded. Now he said, I want you to eat this, this, this Passover ready to leave. With your, lamp, with your lawns girded. Go ahead and read. Your sandals on your feet. Sandals on your feet. And your staff in your hand. And staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. You can now say eat it like, and, and be ready to go. Be ready to go because I'm about to move so quick and you got to be ready to move. Oh my goodness, this is a word for body because sometimes God moves and we're not ready to move when God moves. And God said, I can't pass over you, and, and, and I can't get you in a position to go, but you're not ready to go. Too many times people are, are saying, God, I want you to move. I want you to release me from bondage. I want you to free me. But when God moves, you're not ready to move with God. And he ends up coming through and moving, and you still sitting there talking about, I wasn't prepared for the move. God said, I'm about to move. I'm about to make a difference. I'm about to release you. Make sure that you are prepared for where I'm about to. ready. I wasn't prepared. I have been praying for change. And then when God changed, I was sitting there saying, Lord, I didn't know it was going to happen that fast. I thought you were going to take your time. But God said, when I move, you better make sure you're ready. Oh, church. Church, I don't know about you, but that's some stuff I've been praying for for a long time. Lord, I want you to move. And then sometimes God will move in a way that you were not expecting God to move. And so you're still trying to get ready. And God done came and went on about his business. And you're still trying to figure out, how did I get left back here? He said, make sure you, you eat it. Ready to move. Because I'm about to pass through. Go ahead and read. 
For I will go through the land of Egypt on that night. I'm going to go through the land of Egypt on that night. Go ahead. And I will strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Ooh, and if y'all don't see Jesus in this, I don't know what to tell you. God said, I'm striking down the firstborn in all of Egypt. Every firstborn that's not covered by the blood, I'm striking down. Go ahead and read. Both man and beast. Both man and beast. Go ahead and read. And against all gods. And against Egypt. all gods. Uh huh. I will execute judgment. God said, I'm executing judgment. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Go ahead and read. The blood shall be a sign for you. The blood shall be a sign for you. On the houses where you live. On the houses where you live. Go ahead and read. And when I see the blood. And when I see the blood. I will pass over you. I will pass right on over you. We'll stop right there. Now, now watch this. Watch this, church. Now, this, this had me. This, this had me uh, kind of contemplating some things. God said the blood shall be a sign. Well, the, uh, I got to thinking, well, what do you mean it's a sign? I, I used to believe that the reason God passed over was because the blood was there. I gave power to the blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. I put the power in the wrong place. All right, tell us. All right, let, me, let, me, let me break this down for you. God says, the blood will be a sign. So when I see it, I'm going to pass over. The word sign in the Hebrew means a token, a flag, a banner. Oh, y'all about to make me run. God says, when I see the flag, that the blood is present. The word Passover actually means to hover for a second. Mm -hmm. Who y'all think? I'm coming through at night and I see the flag that your house is covered. God said, I'm going to hover for a second and I'm going to pass through. Okay, okay, let me. What's the flag? Watch this. Get me Revelation 13 and verse number 8. Watch this. I want y'all to see 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 this. You're going to be blessed. I want you to see it. You're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed when you see this. Revelation chapter 13 and verse number 8. All who dwell on the earth. All who dwell on the earth. Will worship him. Will worship him. Everyone whose name has not been written. Everyone whose name has not been written. From the foundation of the world in the book. From the foundation of the world in the book. Of life of the Lamb. Of life of the Lamb. Who has been slain. Who has been slain. If anyone has an ear. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You read, you ain't read King James. I, I got it, you read it? You, the, the King James. I know, I got it too. Okay, give me King James. And all that dwell upon the earth. And all that dwell upon the shall earth. Shall worship him. Shall worship him. Whose names are not written Whose in the book of names life. names are not written in the book of life. Read. Of the Lamb slain. Of the Lamb slain. From the foundation from of the world. From the foundation of the world. Jesus is pictured as already having been slain before there was ever an exodus. So when they put the blood on the door, it was a flag to represent not the lamb that they just slain, but the lamb that was slain. So when God came through on the Passover night and he saw the flag, it wasn't representing the blood of the lamb they just When he saw the blood, he wasn't thinking about the lamb that just killed. He's thinking about the lamb that was killed from the foundation of the world. Jesus Christ's blood had already been shed metaphorically. God had already planted it. It had already been slain. And now God is coming through wanting to find out which house is covered in the blood of his son. He said, when I come up to the door, I'm checking every house to see if it's been covered in the blood of the lamb. I'm looking for a flag. And I wish that was some Christian folk who ain't got no problem saying, I'm a flag preacher. I'm a flag. I ain't got no issue telling folk I've been covered in the blood of the lamb. Touch a neighbor say, be a flag, be a flag, be a flag. Touch two more people and tell them be a flag. If y'all ain't touching nobody, tell them to be a flag.
church, we put too much power. We put it on the wrong lamb. It wasn't that lamb. It was the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world, church. And God said, I'm checking every house to see if they raised the flag. Oh, church, I wish somebody was him who had no problem holding up the blood stain banner and saying, preacher, not only uh, did I cover myself, but I made sure my whole house was covered in the blood of the lamb. Oh, now watch what, says. Watch what God said. Go ahead and read. When he sees that the blood has been put there, go ahead and read. I will pass over you, uh -huh. and no plague will be befall oh you. Gosh. He said, no plague. No plague. God said, no. When, 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 when death comes and sees that blood, no plague. Are y'all following this? Ooh, y'all better shout right now. Y'all better give God some glory. Because of the blood, church, you don't have to worry about a plague. You don't have to worry about a plague. You don't have to worry about anything killing you because you died a long time ago. And anything else now is just icing on the cake. You can take me physically because I was covered by the blood a long time ago. You ain't got a plague that's big enough to undo what God did with the blood. Go ahead, go ahead and read, go ahead and read, go ahead and read. Befall on you to destroy you. To de oh my God. To destroy you. Blood is there. And it protects from the destroyer. Ooh, too many Christians folk come up here. And then y'all, y'all, y'all got enough faith. You sound too depressed. You, you, you actually sound like something can destroy you. Oh my goodness. But if you know you've been covered by the blood of the Lamb. God said a long time ago that blood brings protection and you need to understand that God said I will rebuke some stuff on your behalf. No destroyer is coming. No plague is coming. And even if it comes physically, it can't touch you spiritually. It ain't got a heaven or hell to put you in. I tell you what, you ought to be able to stand and say, you know what? Bring whatever comes it may. Come hell or high water. Come death or the grave. It don't matter. I've been protected a long time ago. I was covered. By the blood, yeah. and I figured out which lamb it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Church, man, this is what this is. This is the problem came into play right here, brother Tillman. The problem came into play is not only had I put too much emphasis on the wrong lamb, I put too much emphasis on the fact that the lamb was slain. Y'all better come in. Does not matter that the lamb is slain. If you ain't put the blood on the door. It doesn't matter that the lamb was slain if you did not apply the blood. And too many folk are resting on the fact that Jesus came, he bled, he died, they had to apply the blood. Church, I don't know, see, you, you got to make sure that you have applied the blood that was slain on your behalf. Had they just had they just killed the lamb and God came through, he would have got them too because it wasn't applied. Oh, you can't 99 and a half won't do, church. There are too many folk who claim that they're Christian and they've had contact with the blood, but the blood has not been applied to your life. How do I know that, preacher? Because when you're covered in the blood, there's a whole lot of stuff you used to do that you can't do no more. You don't feel good doing it no more. Your conscience bothers you now because you've been applied in the blood. Are y'all following this this morning? See, so you got to apply it. There's a story told of a barber who saw a man who was disheveled and, and he was homeless and dirty and his hair was, was high and his beard was unshaven and the barber was cutting a wealthy man's hair and he said to the man, do you see that homeless man who's disheveled, whose hair is, 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 out, is outgrown and he's unshaven and the, and, the, and the man getting his hair cut said, yes, I see him. The barber said, that shows me that there is no God. Because God would not allow someone to look that way. The man getting his haircut said, well, if the basis upon you judging that there is no God is because the man's hair is uncut and he's unshaven, he said, I surmise that there are no barbers. And, and the barber said, of course there are barbers. The, the man just has not found one. And then the, the, the man getting his haircut said, my point exactly, there is a God, but it don't make any difference if you have not come to him to get the application of what God can do for you. You can't look at a person and then judge because they're in that situation. There's no God. God said, I got the blood, but it's up to you to make 
sure that you apply it. Yeah. Oh, church. Yeah. Look at this. Now, watch this, church. I'm going to say a few more words. I'm going to take my seat. Not only, church, does the blood, oh, my goodness, I just wish I had all day. Does the blood cover the house, church? But the blood <clears throat> ensures that as long as they're in the house, they're covered. <laughs> you can't put the blood on the house and then step outside the house and assume that you're protected. God not only said that they had to put the blood on the house, but they had to be in the house. Are y'all following this? Oh, y'all gonna make me preach. Y'all gonna make me preach. Uh, too many folk who, who have access to the blood and have applied the blood, but you keep leaving the house of God. Oh, my goodness. This is the place where you have access to the blood. How can you say that? How can you say that this is the place where you get access to the blood? Because Paul said in Acts chapter 20, he said to feed the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. God put blood on his church, on his house. You can't keep leaving the house and expect to be covered and protected by the blood. Are y'all following this? No matter how much blood is there, if you leave the blood, instituted not just for them but God said when your children start asking what he mean this God said sit down and explain to them that when we were in bondage in order to release us God came through slew the firstborn of every house and passed over us now what comes out of that is the concept that without blood, there remains no remission of sins without the shedding of blood. So now the concept must be passed down from generation to generation that it requires blood to be forgiven. So that when the start of Christianity comes, the emphasis on the redemption of man is brought back to the blood. Oh my goodness, give me, give me first Peter. Give me first Peter chapter one, verse number 18. I got a couple of more points and then I'm, I'm gonna take my seat. A couple of more points. Is this blessing anybody? Yeah. Is this helping anybody? Yeah. Yeah. I want y'all to get the concept of this blood because we act like in the church there ain't no power in the blood. I ain't, I ain't, I'm gonna tell you something, there's power in anything my Lord died for. Yeah. Oh, church, and then folk trying to act like because you're a Christian, you're not worth much. You're not worth much. And I tell them I'm worth a whole lot. I'm worth the blood that was shed for me. Are y'all following this? The thing that you purchase is equal to the purchase price. So if Christ shed his blood for the church, that means the church was so important that he considered it worthy of his blood. Y'all following this? And so you can say all day long that I'm not worth much, but as long as I got the blood. Okay, watch this, watch this, watch this. What's the Bible saying? Verse number 18. First Peter chapter 1, verse number 18. First Peter 1. I'm sorry. I'm going to just take it, Peter. Got excited. I see. It's all right. It's all right. You're trying to push me. First Peter chapter 1, verse number 18. And it reads, uh -huh. For as much as ye know uh -huh. that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things. You were, hold on, now, 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 church. Now, now y'all come in. You were not redeemed yes, sir. with corruptible things. Well, what were you redeemed by? Go, go ahead and read. As silver and gold. Uh, yeah, not by corruptible things. One day silver and gold is going to pass away. Go ahead and read. From your vain conversation. From your vain way of living. Go ahead and read. Receive by tradition from your father. Receive by tradition from your father. Go ahead and read. But with the precious blood of Christ. With the precious. Yes. The yes. precious. Yes. Precious is translated as costly. Yes. Yeah. The costly blood of Jesus Christ. Is what redeemed you. Are y'all following this? Yeah. You are not redeemed by stuff that don't matter. Yes, but by costly blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, now let me let me give you redemption. Let me give you redemption. This redemption is connected to Exodus. How is it connected, Brother Preacher? Because in Exodus, they were being redeemed from the bondage of the Egyptians. Yeah. Now, 
In 1 Peter, the word redemption means to ransom a slave and set him free. Don't miss this. Now, all of us were slaves to sin. You're either a slave to righteousness or a slave to sin. There is no in between. God decides that we need to be redeemed. Purchased back. He's tired of looking at slaves of sin. Now he needs us to be slaves of righteousness. His son comes down from glory. An innocent lamb that was without spot or blemish. So much so that even on the cross, one of the thieves said, this man is innocent. We deserve to be here, not him. Peter says, you were redeemed by the costly blood. Let me put it this way. I want you to get this. Hear me well, church. God died for you. Yes. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's what I want you to see. And it, and it messes me up when I, when I say it that way. That God left heaven and left God. God left God. Came down on earth. Human flesh. And then God walks the earth for 33 years. Yes. God heals for them. He teaches he raises folk from the dead. And then God willingly gets beat 39 times. Mm-hmm. Then God is sent to face Pilate. And then God is condemned to die by the people he came to save. Are y'all following this? Yeah. And then God is, is, is beaten and a cross is placed on his back. And then God is forced to go up Calvary's hill. And then God is nailed to a cross with nails in his hand and nails in his feet. And then God is hung up on a cross for six hours all so he could save folk. Right. Yeah. Right. When you say Jesus, sometimes I feel like you missed the point. It's God. So when it says you were redeemed with costly blood, it was the blood of God coming down. That's why it's only that blood that washes away your sins. Oh my goodness, church. And then the soldier stands at the foot of the cross with a spear in hand, piercing him in his side. And out came blood and water. Oh, church, it's nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. And God says, when I see the flag of the blood, yes, sir. when I see the blood, I'm passing over. Yeah. Church, stand to your feet, stand to your feet, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. What I want you to get this morning, if you don't get anything else, what I want you to get is that you have been redeemed by costly blood. You are only here this morning. You're only still alive today because God sees the blood. You're only here right now because Jesus decided to shed his blood on the cross for sins he never committed. Hebrews says in chapter 6, matter of fact, Patrick, just give me Hebrews 6. Give me Hebrews 6 in verse 4. I'm going to read it myself. I mean, I want you to read it, so I'm going to go from that. What I want you to understand, church, what you understand is the significance of the blood and how gracious God is. How merciful he is. That he lets his son, God, come and die for folk who would not appreciate it. He would let him come to earth. The fact that Christ would leave glory, leave heaven, leave him sitting at the right hand of the Father and come to earth to die for people who would stand at the foot of the cross and say, you save others. Why can't you save yourself? And then have the audacity to wow, hang on a cross, say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They don't understand, Lord, that the blood I'm shedding is for them. They don't know that 
Right now, they're, they're crucifying God. The same God they claim to serve. Now they put me on the cross. But the difference between them and me is that I'm God enough to say forgive them. God enough not to come down. God enough to be spit upon. God enough to suffer a crown of thorns. God enough to hang for six hours. Just so they could be redeemed. But then this is what we do to Jesus. Go ahead and read. For it is impossible for those uh -huh. who were once enlightened uh -huh. and have tasted of the heavenly gift uh -huh. and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost uh -huh. and have tasted the good word of God uh -huh. and the powers of the world to come uh -huh. if they shall fall away uh -huh. to renew them again unto repentance uh -huh. seeing they crucify to themselves they crucify to themselves the Son of God the Son of God afresh all over again and put him to an open shame and put him to an open shame this is what we do after what God has done there's still some folk today saying you have not been on the cross long enough Man. by the way I live I'm going to put you back on it Man. there's somebody here this morning who has not yet even been baptized and covered in the blood of Jesus Christ you know what you're saying? You're saying, Lord, I'm going to keep you on the cross. Because when you stand in defiance to Jesus Christ, you put him right back on the cross. This morning, I'm begging you to get him down and, and, and get covered in the blood. For anybody who's here who has not been baptized, you have not been obedient, you are not covered in the blood of the Lamb this morning, I'm asking you, will you please take Jesus off the cross? Because as long as you are defiant and disobedient, and as long as you want to accept his salvation, you're standing at the foot of the cross, and you got him nailed up there. And he's just saying, I'm doing this for you. Why won't you take me down? Mm -hmm. You don't have to crucify me. I died once. How many more times do you want me up here? Mm -hmm. And I think about every time I do something wrong, I mess up, I get, yeah. I get sad. Well, yeah. Jones, I get, yeah. I get quiet and I, because I start thinking about it, I just put him back up there. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that I'll never be perfect and and I understand that. I know that I never get it all right, but I don't want to ever be so openly defiant that I don't even care that he's up there. I don't want to get to the point where it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't faze me. Thank God I feel awful when I mess up. Because at least I'm sorrowful for him being on the cross. Oh my goodness, give me one more verse. Give me, give me 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 10. 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 10. Watch this church. It's my last verse, I promise. My last verse. Even though I put him up there, even though I put him up on the cross, it's not enough that he died once. Look what he says he'll do for me. Go ahead. If we say we have not sinned. If we say we have not sinned. We make him out to be a liar. We make him out to be a liar. Yeah. And his word uh -huh. is not in us. Uh-huh. That verse number 10? That's 10. Give me eight. <laughs> if we say that we have no sin. There we go. Uh-huh. We deceive ourselves. Uh-huh. And the truth is not in us. Uh-huh. Keep reading verse 9. If we confess our sin, uh -huh. he is faithful uh -huh. and just to forgive our sins. Uh-huh. And to cleanse us uh -huh. from all unrighteousness. Uh -huh, read. If we say that we have not sinned. Look, man, this is what I'm looking for. <laughs> I'm looking for if you walk in the light of Jesus' life. Then verse 6, maybe verse 6. Yeah. That's all you had to say, man. You messed up my homiletical approach to this. But if we walk in the light, here it is, right? Here. As he is in the light, as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Yeah, watch this, man. Yeah, and the blood know, of Jesus Christ. You're pushing me. You're pushing me. <laughs> if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, yes, sir. We have fellowship. Yeah, yeah. One to another, right? Yes. And what? You can read now. 
And the blood of Jesus Christ. And the blood of Jesus Christ. His son. His son. Cleanses us. Cleanses. From all sin. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see that? That present tense cleanses us. No, no, don't miss this, church. Now, here's what I say to people. If walking in the light is the prerequisite for the continual cleansing agent of the blood, and if walking in the light is considered to be righteous, it must mean that God or the blood of Jesus cleanses me even at the point where I'm walking righteously. What does that mean, Brother Preacher? It has to then denote that while even attempting to be righteous, I'm going to fall down. Yes. Well, amen. Yes, sir. Amen. It, it, it must mean that even when I feel like I got it all together, I still don't have it all together. And even when I'm on the right path, God said, look, I know you're trying, so let me go ahead and put some more blood on you so it'll cleanse you from all of your unrighteousness. Because I know you're trying. I know you're giving it your all. I know you're walking the right way. I'm not giving up on you because you fell down. I'm giving you blood to continue cleanse you. I'm so glad that at the cross, the blood doesn't stop flowing, but it flows backward, it flows forward, and it flows in my presence. Right? I know folk in the church trying to act like they got it all together. You a low down, dirty cell because you messed up. I know how they try to act. Everybody come here with a nice Sunday mask on. But I want you to know something. Bro, Mims tries to live as righteous as he can. Yes. And because of that, the devil comes <coughs> harder than you. Yes. 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 And, and there's some time, Bro Waddy, where, where I, I disappointed God and I disappointed myself. And, and I wanna and I and I just don't I don't wanna leave, I don't wanna move and go anywhere. I just I wanna just wallow in my misery. But then I remember. Mm -hmm. Well, that God sees the movie. Yeah. 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 While people judge you off the picture that they took, God sees the end from the beginning. Yeah. And he knows my heart, church. Yeah. And as I walk in the light, that means every step I take, even when I get off the path, God says, here's the blood. Get back home. Yeah. 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 I'm going to commission you this morning. Don't walk out of the theater. Before the credits. Yeah. I do it all the time. I feel like the movie is over and I leave. Uh, the movie's done, let me go, I want to beat the crowd. When you miss the credits, you miss who created the movie. Uh -huh. You miss the producer, the executive producer. You miss the writer, the director, the costume designer. You miss everybody, even the characters whose names have been changed. You get to see their real name when you get to the credits. And it's like that in life and spirituality. People leave the theater before the credits ever start rolling. And so you forget who's behind the entire movie you just saw. And, and I've, I've come today to tell you that even though I fall down, I'm still in the theater. I'm still watching the movie, Brother Hill. Because as God is unfolding it to me, I'm so glad I get to be a character and a spectator. I get to I get to start in the movie and then step back and say, God, what are you going to do now? What's the next scene? And God said, even when you mess up, son, I'm still rolling the footage and now I'm going to blood. You know what you need to do. You have not been baptized in water for the remission of your sins. You got Jesus on that cross and this morning you better take him down. Take him down because you don't need him on the cross no more. You need him in your life. You need them beside you. You need them walking hand in hand. You need the blood always. Get him down this morning. How am I going to do that? You're going to come by believing that he came, blessed, suffered, and died. You made up your mind. I'm done. I'm changing. I'm through living this way. I'm going to confess Christ, and I'm being baptized today so God can perform an operation by faith, and I access the blood of Jesus Christ. It's salvation that's going to get you to that blood. Amen. That's what you're going to do. And then when you get saved and you get baptized and you get covered by this blood of Jesus Christ, you're going to stay in the theater. Until it's over. Man. You're going to stay there. And you're going to let the credits roll. And every now and then when the credits get done, there's one more scene. Well, There's one more scene. Church, I can't wait for that one more scene. Yeah. When I get to glory. Y'all yeah. come on. You know, you know, 